Hi, this is Philip Ador, founder of NCLEX RN45 Day Challenge. In this video, I'm going to be talking about premature rupture of the membrane. Amniotic fluid starts to be continuously produced at approximately 16 weeks of gestation. Remember that it's primarily dependent on fetal urine productions. Amniotic fluid allows for fetal movement and breathing which are important for the fetal skeletal, lung, and chest development. Decreased or absent amniotic fluid can lead compressions of the cord and decreased placental blood flow. Fetal membranes lead to a loss of these protective effects in the developments of the world's amniotic fluid. The objectives of this video are to list the history of physical findings and diagnostic methods to confirm rupture of the membranes, identify risk factors for premature rupture of the membranes, Describe the risk and benefits of expectant management versus immediate delivery based on the gestational age. And finally, describe the methods to monitor maternal and fetal status during expectant management. PROM is premature rupture of the membranes before the onset of the labor. PPROM is a preterm premature rupture of the membranes occurring before 37 weeks estimated gestational age. This is a leading cause of neonatal morbidity and mortality and is associated with 30% of preterm deliveries. The consequence of the PPROM depends on the gestational age, the time of occurrence, persistent oligohydamnios at less than 22 weeks estimated gestational, incomplete fetal development, and development of pulmonary hypoplasia. Infants born with pulmonary hypoplasia cannot be adequately ventilated when PPROM occurs between 24 and 26 weeks. There is likely to be survival. However, there will be possible substantial morbidities from extreme prematurity. What are the risk factors of the PROM? Anything that weakens the strengths of the chorioamniotic membranes. Here is the uterus, here is the cervix, and this is the chorioamniotic fluid. And the ascending infections from the vagina will weaken the membrane so sexually transmitted infections and other lower genital tract infections such as bacterial vaginosis play a role as risk factors. This can be reason why a short cervix is also a risk factors for PROM. The risk factors for PROM is also doubled for women who smoke. Other risk factors include history of prior PROM, polyhydamnios, and multiple gestations will basically descend to the chorioamniotic membranes. Other risk factors are similar to the risk factors for preterm delivery, including a prior preterm delivery, bleeding, pregnancy, low socioeconomic status, and low body mass index. It is very important to be able to accurately diagnose when a patient has had ruptured her membranes. Patients may describe an obvious gush of fluid, or they may be described as steady leakage of small amounts of fluids. It can be confusing for during pregnancy, there are many things that can mimic the amniotic fluid. It could be urine, normal vaginal secretions of, of pregnancy, increased cervical discharge, cement, or perennial sweat. For the physical exam, a sterile speculum examination should be performed to visually assess the cervix, and this allowed for cervical gonorrhea and chlamydia. A group B step culture should be obtained as well. An ultrasound should be performed to assess the fetal positions as well as to assess the amount of the amniotic fluid. Remember to minimize digital cervical examinations to decrease the risk of infection. For diagnostic, testing nitrosine paper is used for amniotic fluid as alkaline with pH greater than 7.1 and vaginal secretions of pH between 4.5 to 6. So amniotic fluid will appear blue on nitrosine fluid paper. Burning refers to the pattern of authorizations when amniotic fluid is placed on a slide and is allowed to dry. And finally, pulling refers to the filling of the speculum with amniotic fluid. Once we have confirmed that the rupture of the membranes has occurred, 
that we need to move on to the management. How do we decide and expect the management versus immediate delivery? The patient's cessation, age, presence of clinical infections, placental abruptions, labor, and fetal status all have to be taken into account. If the patient is termed greater than 37 weeks, approximately 90% of patients will go into spontaneous labor with 24 hours, within 24 hours. Labor should be induced either at the time of the presentations or the patients can be expectantly managed. Induction of labor reduces the time of delivery and the rates of chorioamnionitis and the endometritis and admission to the neonatal intensive care unit. If the patient does not go into spontaneous labor on her own, then labor induction should be performed with oxytocin. For patients who are preterm or less than 37 weeks, the risk of uterine infections versus the risk of prematurity need to be weighed carefully. For late preterm patients from 34 to 36 weeks and 6 days estimated gestational age, management is the same as term. For the risk of infections, outweigh the risk of prematurity, an introduction of the labor started to these patients once rupture of the membranes is confirmed. If the fetus is rich in the cesarean sections, will have to be performed. Between 24 weeks and 33 and 6 days, the risk of fetal lung maturity from prematurity is very high. Thus, it is important to administer corticosteroids which enhance the fetal pulmonary maturity. Antibiotics are administered to increase the latency period, which is the time between the rupture of the membranes and spontaneous labor. Antibiotics are administered because they have been shown to increase the amount of time before the spontaneous labor. The antibiotics are not to treat the infections. If there is an infection present, diagnosed by either in tenderness, fevers, or increased white blood cells, the delivery needs to be initiated. Assuming that there is no evidence of uterine infections of patients with PPROM around from 24 to 33 and 6 days, estimated gestational age will be admitted for, for inpatient hospitalizations with ultrasounds to assess amniotic fluid volume and antipartal testing such as non-stress tests. Delivery will be induced between 32 and 34 weeks. Remember again, However, if the patient develops evidence of eastern infections and delivery will be immediately initiated. Pre-valuable promises are rare occurring in less than 1% of pregnancies and there are important risks of prematurity to discuss with those populations. Pulmonary hypoplasia rates are approximately 10 to 20% and prolonged oligohydramnios can cause fetal deformities and limb contractures because the fetus cannot move freely, freely within the amniotic sac. Neonatal death and morbidity rates decrease with the longer latency period and, adva and advancing gestational age. There are also significant maternal complications that occur within prolonged ruptures of the membranes with increased risk of systemic infections. Management for patients with viable PPROM involves patients counseling and expected management or inductions of labor, antibiotics and corticosteroids are not recommended before viability.